Redefining City Dining. Hello, Lorenzo. Thanks for coming by here. I'm doing good. How you guys doing? Doing, doing great. Good. I good. see your name on the injury list as, uh, <laughs> well, you're rest. playing. We know that. Uh, yeah, I guess it's old age is, is the injury and the rest is the remedy. <laughs> Two really, days. Uh, <laughs> I prefer to think of it more as disease. Is what yeah, I, yeah, yeah what it's something. Yeah. Right, right. Wednesday, <laughs> Thursday off. So you yeah, get one yep. good full practice in today, I would think, huh? Yeah, I got it in today. We've kind of transitioned to that, especially when we're playing more of a traditional style team um, because we're actually supposed to start this kind of regimen last week versus Baltimore, but since they were obviously so unorthodoxed in their run formations and what they did with Lamar, I actually practiced two days last week. And you also had 10 days, 10 days to get ready for that team. Yeah, and I had, right, so I had that extra day yeah, rest yeah. as well, so it made right. sense for me to started this week on the Baltimore game as you look back you must feel like um not that you're happy with the win but right you guys held Lamar Jackson in check as well as anybody has all year yeah I mean statistically I think we um had a great day I mean as far as everything they normally do I think they normally average around 200 plus yards yep. rushing we ha- held them to I think like half 110 of half of that right they normally average 5.1 I think we held them to like 3.6 per run so we definitely had the formula to beat them the biggest difference, I, I believe, in last week's game was the turnover uh, mar- margin. Obviously, we broke even, and anytime you play an elite team like this, you have to win the turnover yeah, and give your offense more time because their defense is really good as well. Their offense gets a lot of the credit as far as what they do, but their defense plays at a high level as well. The same thing with this week. Their defense thrives on sacks and turnovers. Exactly. And that's, and that's um, special. I mean, that makes that changes games. Yeah, and, and so that's really what we're, we're up against as far as when we compete, you know, defense versus defense is who can really take the ball more, put our offense in great advantageous spots, and so that gives our offense a short field to score. Right. What um, schematically, and I know that doesn't cover everything, but in, in limiting Lamar Jackson last week, what was it you tried to do and what worked effectively? You don't want to answer? No, I really don't because I, I plan on seeing them again. Right. And so right. I don't want to say anything. I want to let them figure it out Good answer. What, what, what we were doing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, it's funny. A lot of people said that. Yeah, said that. A lot of people yeah said I plan that. on do doing that, you know, um, because obviously I thought it was two great teams matching up. Obviously, yeah. they, they made more plays and came up winning against us. Uh, but I feel still have great confidence in this team, and I feel that we are going to put ourselves in a position to get in the playoffs and most likely find a way to, to play them again. I yeah. told Steve this Monday, I'm sorry to interrupt, even upstairs in the radio booth, game's over, I walk out, and the Ravens play-by-play guy, and we both looked at each other and said, let's do this again. That's right. how much fun that game yeah, was. It was That's a great game, and I, I think we earned their respect. I think we earned a lot of people's respect as far as how physical we played them. Um, you know, even talking to their, some of their coaches, you know, Coach Cully was like, hey, man, we played – you know, we played the 49ers, we, we, we played the Patriots, and we felt like you guys are right up there with them yeah. And as far as physicality and what you guys bring to the table from a defensive standpoint. And that's the, and that's the big downer for that. It, it was a missed opportunity. That right, was, That yeah. was a time when you had a game that you could have won against yep. a, a really good opponent, just, and it didn't happen. And that's the one that, that, yeah, but that, you that know, sticks with you a Young while, team, right? you learn from it, right? We're going to bounce back this week, and then you carry that, you know, obviously as we hopefully achieve a playoff berth into the playoffs with us and, and let you know when you start playing these elite teams, your, 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 your margin of victory, I mean, that window shortens. Because I was even comparing this game to, I think at one point we're down 16 nothing. In the, in the first week we played a, a team that wasn't as good as the Ravens and we were able to overcome that. Right. It's hard to overcome that when you start playing the Patriots and the Ravens and the mm-hmm. Saints, those caliber mm-hmm. of teams. Sure. So you have to be able to go out there and execute and not put yourself in a hole where you have to kind of battle your way out of it. We're with Lorenzo Alexander, Bills linebacker Lorenzo Alexander with the lowdown. He joins us every Friday. One of the hallmarks of this 2019 Bills team has been the fact that you, you don't lose, you haven't lost two in a row. Yeah. What's been the secret see. there? How have you bounced back? Um, just staying confident and getting back to, um, to our game plan and, and having great weeks of practices and not really uh, dwelling on the loss and just kind of moving on the same way we would do when we won a game. And I really just think that's, that shows a lot of growth in our football team from year one to year two. Um, um, with uh, Josh at the helm, um, and really in our third year with Sean, it's just that mentality of being able to grow and handle success, but then also overcome adversity. Because when you look at good football teams, teams that are end up, you know, obviously 13-3, 12-4, even playoff teams, 
they rarely ever have back-to-back losses. They normally stack and wins because that allows them to put them in a self position to make the playoffs. Well, there's also a reason after this last week to congratulate you. You've been nominated as the Walter Payton Man of the Year for, for the club. Congratulations. No, on I appreciate that. Once that. again, I, mean, I know how it's a huge honor. Yeah, it is, especially because our team votes for it. Um, the men in that room vote for the guy, and we have a lot of men um, in our locker room. And, I mean, every week somebody, somebody's doing something, whether it's Harrison Phillips, or, um, Micah, um, Hyde, uh, Ty and Secchi. I mean, I can go down the list of guys uh, that are very generous with their time, their money, um, and their resources and they give back. And so to be able to represent those, that group of men, um, I think it's a huge honor. Yeah, that's your third time in the four years you've been with Buffalo as the Bills nominee, right, for the Walter Payton? Yeah, Man yeah, which is really cool. Just, so just trying to be consistent and, and just live my life and, and really just use the gifts and uh, resources and the relationships that God has really presented with me um, for being a 15-year NFL vet and, and give back to the community. And so that's something that's really at our core with this team anyway. What's your... Um I, you might not want to answer this one either. <laughs> but you got Aces Foundation. You got your relationship with South Park High yeah. School. You got a lot of other things. Right. Is there one thing that you consider the foundation of your off-field uh, charitable kind of endeavors? Or is it just all the, um, all the above? Yeah, it's all the above. You're talking about as far as one thing that I really love doing? Yeah. Um, I would say probably South Park. And I, and I think it's more just the essence of what that is. I, I really enjoy mentoring young men and helping them understand um, – their capabilities of, of what they have, the gifts that they've been given, and not allowing them themselves sometimes to define themselves by the environment that they're growing up or some circumstances that they've put themselves into, yeah. and really watching that maturing process when they start figuring out really how to be accountable, uh, productive, and um, really utilize the stuff that they have inside. And so I, that's probably what I really love the most. For example, about South Park, and I remember last spring you took a group of kids down south to look at a couple of colleges, right? Yeah. yeah have we you, had is about, that borne any fruit? Have you seen anything as a result yeah, of that trip? Yeah, most definitely. I mean, there's a couple of young men, I think, that understand, okay, it's more to life than just Buffalo. Um, yeah. mm -hmm. I, I might have a chance to I could possibly play at this school. And then you start understanding what it takes. Because I think a lot of times you just don't know what it takes, you know, because you only know what you see every single day. You see guys, you know, going about how they work, and then you go to, you know, a Maryland or a Georgetown or um, I think we were at Howard as well, and then you see the football players and how serious and, and how they approach the game, and then you see the requirements it's going to take, and then you look at, well, I'm, I'm not there yet. And right. so Grade-wise. Grade-wise, you, grade yeah. you know, workout-wise, lifting-wise, yeah. and it makes you, okay, well, if I want to get there, it's, it's yeah. something has to change. And it's – and it's a situation where it's knowledge is power. They exactly. just didn't know. They didn't it's know. Not like, right. It's not like that, you know, they just didn't have a chance to learn. And, and also for this Walter Payton Man of the Year, fans vote for this. And you can do it on Twitter by using the hashtag WPMOY. And that'll be uh, with your favorite player's hashtag, which is yours. Right. And um, between December 12th and January 12th, and you, you got a chance to receive a, a chunk of money, like twenty five grand for your charity. Yes. And, and it'll yeah, come so back also, here to Western New York. Yeah, so Nationwide is obviously doing um, a challenge, as you mentioned, with the hashtag. And so the player is first, second, third place, 25K, 15, and 10K. So it's just additional right. resources to your foundation and the cause that you do in the cities that you serve. So the actual really cool. award is voted on by a panel, right? They have a special Yeah, there's panel a committee of, uh, that's on the panel. I don't know everybody that's on it, but I do know that uh, Walter Payton's kids are on that panel uh -huh. right. and uh, with some very other, uh, other people. I, Goodell may even sit on that as well. And... Mm -hmm. um, they've done a great job over the years of just picking somebody that really represents, um, I think, the heart of NFL men overall. Yeah, and right. the one thing, I really like this aspect of it, too. It's the Walter Payton Man of the Year. They don't give it to players who don't produce. So it's off the field, obviously, charitable work. But right. you've got to be a, a good, accomplished player on the field as yeah, well, right? Yeah, it's definitely both in being able to use, utilize your platform that you've been given by being a great player, but really, really emphasizing because Walter Payton – you know, I probably didn't get enough credit while he was doing it, what he, what he meant to his community right. in Chicago <laughs> off the field. Sure. So they really highlight that. And what I really love, the NFL has really made this their flagship award and have really put a lot of resources in behind it. Because the first year I, I was a nominee in Washington, I believe we got maybe a $5,000 uh, um, grant, which is, which is great. But yeah. now you get $50,000 to your charity and then 50000 to the local United Way. And then if you win it, you get – a million dollars essentially, five hundred to the local United Way and five hundred to your right. your charity it's of choice. Big. So they've really it's put big, a lot yeah. of resources behind men serving the community and being 
not only an example athletically to, to young athletes, but how to be a great person and what that means and how much of an impact you can do by just serving people and, and really caring for people. And it's in, in the world we live in with social media and the snark that, that just surrounds all of us, um, there's a lot of guys to choose from in that. The league is full of guys. Yeah. Not that you don't stand out. You do. Yeah. But even on the Bills roster, yeah, there's three, four, of, five, you know, ten guys who do yeah. this stuff. They've got their own foundation. Right. And Secchi and Harry Phillips. Yeah. Every elite team in the league has guys. Exactly. they got to pick between guys on their own roster. I right. mean, the league is full of outstanding guys who really have given back to their community, not only in the in the communities in which they play, but also their hometown Towns, communities. Yeah. They go back and give away. And it's... It gets far too little attention how positive these NFL players are in their community where they play and where they and where they live in the off season or their hometowns. And I and I'm, it's really nice that the league has finally started to say, you know what? Yeah. Enough of this snark on Twitter. Right. Let's show these guys what they're really made. Show people what these guys are really made of. And it's been a really nice push by the NFL to highlight guys like you and Harrison and guys all over the league. Right. Yeah. And it's awesome. It's awesome to be a part of. And they have this whole cool thing down at. Um, Super Bowl week now, right. you know, obviously they had the NFL honors where they announced the guy, but even before then, you like getting to meet the guy, serving the community, and get to hang out with the Peyton family and kind of get to know his kids, so you obviously get to know him in a sense, and so it's, it's a special moment and, and a great time. It's your fifth time as the team's nominee? Yes, yeah, my, my wow. fifth time, That's twice great. with the Redskins, third time here, so yeah, it's been a blessing. And again, as Steve mentioned, fans can help if you go on Twitter, use hashtag WPMOYChallenge. Walter Payton Man of the Year Challenge, followed yep. by Lorenzo's name. Yeah, you can just put that at the end of a regular tweet. You don't even have to be tweeting about me. Just add that at the end of any yeah, right. account. Yeah. <laughs> hey, before we get to your lowdown, Lorenzo Alexander in studio with us. Uh, before we get to the lowdown and the exact keys of the game, just tell me in general, uh, playing Sunday night football, what does that mean? Maybe you played in some of the other NFL stops. Yeah. You were used to that, but it's it's not... It's not usual here. They haven't played here in 12 years. Well, yeah, I mean, obviously it's a, it's, a, it's a huge honor, especially when you, your, your game gets flexed to that. That means you're doing well as a football team, so it's a, 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 a team accomplishment. But it just to me, it's like a Monday night or a Thursday, and you're the only game that's on. And so all eyes are on you, and it's another opportunity to showcase what, you, what you're trying to build, especially here in Buffalo. And uh, for us, it's going to be a great game because Pittsburgh is an historic franchise. Um, that is really starting to play some really good football here of late. And I think they started, what, one and three or one something, and four, one and four. One and, yeah, one and, five, and it battled yeah. back to be in a position to be be talked about in the playoffs as well. And so it's going to be a great game in front of a great fan base. I know we'll have some Bills Mafia members in-house too. And uh, can't wait for that physical throwdown type game. You've um, you've also got your middle linebacker and kind of the voice of your defense, Tremaine going back. He's got a couple of brothers on you. <laughs> yeah. And what kind of conversations have you guys had in the oh, locker room it's about? It's been funny. You know, all we give him a hard time. You know, obviously he's playing his brothers, and so who's gonna have the better game? Hey, did you show your your, your brother uh, our iPad on, yeah, on right, Monday, right, right. Tuesday? <laughs> Just give him a hard time. You know, his brother makes a a, a good play. Man, we should have got that. That, yeah, that brother, you what know. We, doing? we got the <laughs> yeah. wrong brother, right? We got the, got wrong, the wrong one, brother. you know. So he's messing with him, but obviously he's up for it. I think that's the, the time that you probably raise your game the, the highest is when you're playing against people you either really know really well or family because you got to go home and, and hang out with them. They train right. together. You got to see them. Mm -hmm. So I know Tremaine's, you know, energy level is going to be on a whole nother level when he's facing his brother because obviously he wants to go out there smack them, and especially win the game. All right, let's get to the lowdown. Lorenzo takes us through his keys for a Buffalo victory as the Bills get set to go to Pittsburgh. Your first uh, lowdown makes sense because this is the number one takeaway team the Steelers are in the NFL. Huh? Yeah, I mean, it's going to be huge for us. Um, obviously, protecting the football. Um, I think that hurt us, obviously, last week. Um, and any time that we can control the field position, which plays a huge part in this game, and as far as not giving the ball away, that's going to give us an up. And you don't want to give an offense that – is, I don't think it's able to really drive the ball consistently down the field. I think they've relied on their defense with getting turnovers and some big plays. Um, that's how they've been able to score and, and, and win some of these games of late. And so that's something that we want to be able to do. And also, when I say protect the ball, we need to take the ball away. Right. Take the ball away from them and put our offense in some short fields so get some confidence going so they can put some points on the board as well. One of the things about it is, too, as, as unpredictable as turnovers are, it's still something that if a team gets used to having – right. Um, you take something away from them. Yeah. And that it's as simple as, hey, punting on fourth down rather than giving them a short field on third. Right? <laughs> yeah, and it, it makes a huge difference, uh, especially when you have, for us, when we have a good defense, you know, instead of having that turnover now, we got to defend at the 35 where they already have right. points pretty right. much. Right. Depending on what the weather's like, you know, punting to the other end, 
we help, we hold them. Maybe they got to do something they don't want to do. We create a turnover, a short field for the offense. There's always that field position battle that comes, uh, um, I think that becomes um, lost in the shuffle, especially with the turnovers. Your second lowdown is win the 50 50 balls. You're talking about offense and defense? Yeah, I'm talking about really defensively for us okay. as far as what they have done um, offensively um, with Hodges. He has not been afraid to throw the ball up to their playmates. He's aggressive, yeah. He's real aggressive. And, and, and some of these balls they're coming up with is like, wow, that's a great catch. And so they've made a lot of plays, and so they're relying on that um, a lot of times. Or to get a DPI, um, is, right. which has really allowed them to get big chunks of yards and put them in position to score points um, or continue drives. And so that's something that obviously uh, Tredavious, uh, Kevin Johnson, and uh, Levi Wallace is really focused on this week as far as just being able to track the ball and going up and winning those balls and hopefully coming down, not, not with just a – um, a breakup, but sometimes coming up with an interception. We had Greg Cosell from NFL Matchup on. They did a film study. He said one of the things that they jumped off the film at them about Duck Hodges is he's throwing it in there. He's oh, yeah. taking some chances. He's not shy about letting it loose. He's a pretty good, accurate thrower. Right. But he's throwing it into some covered guys, and they're coming up with plays. And he said that's – you don't see that with young quarterbacks. Yeah, you don't because they're scared to turn the ball over. And right. so they've – you know – you know, and plus, when you're playing with a defense and you, you trust them too, you more amped to let me, okay, let me throw this thing up. Our defense is going to stop them, hold them to maybe a field goal or a punt. But then also, with a lot of these big throws, they're doing a lot of run and catch. You know, they have their punt returner that's, um, you know, like the third or fourth uh, receiver, throwing a lot of these check downs, and they're exploding until these big 20 touchdown style runs. Last thing of your lowdown, uh, and this should not surprise anyone since you are so tuned in to special teams, but. <laughs> yeah. um, Field position was a problem against Baltimore last week. Is that what got you thinking about special teams? Um, no, not really. Um, it's more so about what Pittsburgh is known for. I mean, last week they had a big uh, return for a touchdown. Um, they're good for running some fakes against you. I actually had some history with this uh, special teams coach, Danny Smith. Oh, I was sure. with him. Danny. He was, obviously was up here for yeah, a while. Yeah. I spent seven years with Danny Washington. in Washington. Um, so I just know that he has a huge emphasis, and, and uh, Tomlin has a huge emphasis on special teams. They have big linebackers. They take pride in winning that battle, and that's definitely going to help our team on both sides if we can obviously limit their return game and, and get Dre going in the punt and kickoff return game. Last thing we got for you, Lorenzo, um, your hometown, Oakland, uh, home of the Raiders. You played there one year. They're apparently, and no one's quite sure, but they think it's going to be the last ever home game for the Raiders right. in Oakland. Steve has no fond memory. You never played in Oakland. <laughs> never played, no never played there, but you've been there. Plus, let's face it, it's the third time they've said goodbye. Yeah, so, right, right, right. Know. What does they that mean goodbye to you? When they went to L.A., they said goodbye last year because they didn't know where they were going to play, yeah. and now they're going to say goodbye again. <laughs> I mean, well, I, I mean, it. I'm not as sad because – I grew up a Niners fan because they, oh, they right. were in L.A. doing the first goodbye. Okay. <laughs> so, right. But I guess I'm more sad for I have a lot of friends and family that obviously love the Raiders. Um, obviously, the city supports them and loves them as well uh, from a fan perspective. Um, so it's going to be uh, sad to see them go because I know there's a lot of uh, fans. But they, Raider Nation travels well. I know we used to always get a ton of people coming down from L.A. every single week in Vegas. It's really, if you get the flight early enough, it's a $100 ticket or a, a, what, a, maybe a 14-hour drive. And I know people will make that to go sure. see them. Yeah. Not to speak ill of the imminent uh, dying stadium here, but the place is a dump, right? You played there for a year. Yeah, it's, it's a dump. Awful. I, I get, yeah, yeah, yeah. But that's why I said fan perspective. The city didn't want to back them to, you know, and right. obviously work something out to get another deal going yeah, to get a new stadium. Saying, that's, the, that's the worst part. Saying that stadium's a dump is an insult to dump. <laughs> yeah, it's bad. I told you about it's the bad. sewage and stuff. I, yep. I saw, and I said, then I think I even texted you one time when I found the, the clip of the sewage cover backing up. Did you ever get that from me? Uh, no. Oh, no. No, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I'd save it. But, yeah. Uh, I got a how about I'm doing the radio game there, doing the game in the radio booth, and there's a steady drip. Did I tell you this? Yeah. Right. And I said to the guy, right, right, on the like network my TV game. booth, we got a steady yeah. drip. And I said to the guy, what's going on? And he goes, oh, don't worry about it. I think the men's room's up there. Right. I'm like, what do you mean? Don't worry about it. No, I'm worried. It's true. <laughs> Lorenzo, yeah, it's congratulations. Walter Payton, man of the year, yeah, nominee. Fifth you guys. time man, in your come career. Come on, man. It's great seeing you. Stay healthy, and we'll see you here next week. Thanks, yes, sir. Lorenzo right. Alexander, Bills uh, linebacker, joining us for the lowdown. Fridays at two. It is brought to you by Hutches. Redefining City Dining. We're back with more Steve and I, One Bills Live, presented by Colada Health from the Seneca Studio in Orchard Park on Buffalo Bills Radio.